that some of your viewers might be interested in for this case yeah. is that, um, and, and this may change the behavior of some lawyers. You don't have to follow what the law says it would be a fair deal. Okay, so you can take that away from this case. Here, the Supreme Court said that at the time of these guys drafting the agreement, the parties right. drafting the agreement, right. they felt like it was fair. Right. Um, and the other circumstances uh, allowed it to be fair. Right. So what that tells me is the law and your entitlement is one thing to consider. Laura and I often work with families who come to us who say, the law isn't going to work for us in this, this, or this way. For example, a lot of times people come to us and they say, I want to keep my pension. He, want to keep, he wants to keep his pension and we'll just divide everything else. That's not what the law says, but right. we, we can do it. Right. We can do it. But the more you're going to deviate from the law, just like right. this family did, they actually deviated significantly from the law, right? right? Instead yeah. of not 90,000, they did five. Yeah. If you're going to deviate from the law, then the way, the, the way you do the agreement the circumstances around it, it's so important that you're doing it correctly. And sometimes I get frustrated with traditional lawyers who say you have to have the case, you have to get everything you're entitled to and you can't yeah. just, you can't consider a deal that is a compromise. Yeah. Right? No, you can. And a compromise can still be objectively fair. And so I think that could be a good takeaway too. Oh yes, Laura. I want to come in here because as I appreciate the word compromise, I really also think of uh, prioritize. So there is another takeaway from this particular case and other mediation cases that we do together yeah. is that it's it's families, instead of thinking of compromising necessarily, they're thinking of prioritizing, prioritizing moving forward, yeah. prioritizing their mental health, prioritizing yeah. their children's health, their co-parenting relationship. So prioritizing those elements versus what the law is giving me in terms of a dollar value right Very so true. that is not their priority you know the dollar value or the equalization or whatever the valuation is of a whatever that is not their priority and they uh, they, they choose different differently that uh, that way because that has value to them so that i think that for me that is that is a very important aspect of any type of um contract that you enter in mm -hmm. that if if it doesn't look that if it doesn't look and that's when the legal system it's it could be a bit frustrating or rigid in that sense that if yeah. it doesn't read the way that you know the 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 written law of the rules are or following that then they're they're they can't extrapolate necessarily the value that that person or those parties have placed on moving forward on remaining friends on you know mm -hmm. other stuff that you cannot quantify or or writ write in a, in a legal contract um so yeah before i sign off uh, does anybody have any any more words of wisdom <laughs> that they want to add I think if you're going to draft your own agreement yeah. <laughs> between the parties, yeah, um, it is important you do it. You you do it with. Uh, I I really now I I really believe actually in in uh, having uh being informed of of uh, of the financials, having legal advice, uh, having an understanding, and not having you know any type of duress. The, the reality is that if you if you're missing if you're uh, avoiding those elements thinking that you are going to uh, save money or or whatever mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're it, it, lots of times may come back and to bite you yeah. uh, you know in, in the butt and actually cost you more in terms of the financial piece and the, and and it really I'm not I'm not selling a process I'm not selling mediation or any any type of process I think it's just the the understanding of all this uh, legal language that families may 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 perceive differently and then they may enter into a contract because they don't fully understand what they're signing on to and then you know later down the road they do come to some new information and 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 they they feel regretful or re remorseful for that so then you want to avoid this the this this element in the future i also think that if you are going to enter into something you know it's, it's pretty much a recurring theme when you when you sign make sure you understand what you're signing and you're not under duress yeah well, this is, it's very interesting because um, that word understanding, mm -hmm. uh, I think most people who are not legally trained, when they read a contract, they're using their um, 
you know, intuition or everyday dictionary to interpret the terms. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it's just interesting because I think sometimes you think you understand something, but you don't really. <laughs> yes. And that's when it's important what you had mentioned earlier that the mediator is is uh, is sharing the information in a neutral from a neutral lens with both parties at the same table at the same that's time right. which yeah. we find that extremely important we sometimes have families or couples or individuals in a family who say to us during the intake don't mention spousal support right <laughs> to the other okay. party because i don't want yeah. her for him to know the the idea and we say yeah. immediately that's not how this goes. Process oh. is important. Transparency is almost you know, crucial. You both are going to hear the same information at the same time. You're not going to hear separately. If we have to have a separate meeting after, that's okay. But we want to deliver the information at the same time because that's powerful. That allows one party to hear, but the, it allows the other party to also see that this person already heard. So has the information. Oh. So there's an exchange that happens in multiple <laughs> dynamics, yes. which is a very, very important aspect of, of having the neutral environment and having both of them hearing the same information at the same time. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that is a really, really important point. Um, I think that sometimes when people get in conflict and the only model that they have is the adversarial model, it's, it's hard for them to realize that there's a better alternative, which is that if you're being educated in a neutral environment, like you said, where you have everybody here, everybody knows that everybody is hearing the same thing at the same time, mm -hmm. um, that, that is a much, um, much fairer way, I think, of um, understanding how the law works. Um, right. So thank you, guys. Thank you so thank you so much for coming in today and uh, commenting on this really interesting case. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening If you and watching. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, and we're going to see you at our next time. Bye. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye. Okay.